Hi. Uh, this morning on Facebook, I got a request to do a repair on this side cover. It was uh, shown in my advertisement I have on Facebook. Now, I already have a repair on this, so I'm going to have to drill another hole in it to make the repair, and we will do that. But first, I want to talk to you about the rod just a teeny bit. This is what we're selling. It's a aluminum brazing rod, second generation, no aluminum, no lead, no heavy metals. It melts 500 degrees below the melting point of aluminum. Uh, that makes it very easy to use. Second generation rod is not like everything else you see out there. It's a newer product. Now, I recommend when you buy the rod, practice on it something first. Don't go out there and work on your most difficult thing right off the bat like you know what you're doing. It takes a little bit of practice like anything else. So, what I'm going to do on this can, I know it's kind of fun, but it's also a very good training tool. Knock off the oxidation. Then we poke a hole. I've seen this a hundred times probably. Now to make this work, I do not melt the rod with the torch. I heat up the can, the can melts the rod. Very important not to put the rod in the flame. And we're going to move the camera angle up so you can actually see what I'm doing. And But one thing I'm going to go through with you first, here's what I do. I don't start down here and try to get it to work. That's too much heat for that thin aluminum. I'm up here and I start checking it and then I lower the torch. I keep the rod out of the flame but I keep checking it. That's how I determine the temperature. When the can gets to the correct temperature, the rod melts. I back the heat up. I don't need to get it any hotter, but I got to maintain that temperature. Now up here, I can work on it all day long. Down here, we're going to have a big old hole. If I go up too high, the rod will quit working. I just got to come back down and get back up to the temperature of 735 degrees. It's very easy. It's just about maintaining your temperature. If you can do this, you can work on about anything. All right, here we have a different angle so you can see what's going on. Now I got this torch turned way down so I don't make a lot of noise. Now I can have the torch at full speed or high heat, but I'll be up here with it. I'll just back it off more. So I'm going to apply heat and I'll start checking it. The can will melt the rod at the correct temperature. I do not have to guess on anything. When we get to the correct temperature, the rod melts and I back the heat up. But to prove a point, there it is. It's the soda can melting the rod, not the torch. Put the rod in the flame, it's not going to work. So apply heat, and I'll remelt that, heat it back up again, and then I'm going to go right over that hole. I have the can at the temperature, I back the heat up to maintain that temperature, and then I go past the, right over that hole. Look at the bridging action. I'm going to hit the can, nothing falls in there. Now you might notice I'm going way past that repair site. The reason I'm doing that is on purpose because this rod is actually penetrating into the pores of the aluminum. Therefore I tied the whole bottom of that can together. If I would have just gone around the hole, I would not have very much aluminum in contact with the rod. I hit that with a hammer and screwdriver, it's going to poke through. But because I went so wide, the whole bottom of that can is now tied together. So when I hit that, and I will do that, you'll see the can crush because I'm hitting, now drawing in from a very large area. That's where you get your strength, 45,000 pound tensile strength. Now when that cools, we'll take a hammer and try to break it. In the meantime, I'm going to move this to the side and we'll drill a hole in here and fix it. Now notice I have a repair here. This will remelt, but I can prevent that from remelting by just putting a heat sink on it. We'll drill a hole here or somewhere on this side, hit and, and repair that without compromising this side. All right, here we go. My case, what a nice case. Not such a nice case anymore. Now we'll brush it up, remove the oxidation. This works on cast aluminum, cast magnesium, white metal, and top metal. Now on thick aluminum, I'd want to countersink that. Uh, if I have a larger hole than that, I'd put a backer like I did on this repair. It was a very large hole. I put a backer on it, and then I just went over. 
that area. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to heat this up. This is already cleaned in here and I will not just go over the hole like that. I need to go on the inside as well and then come out. And if I need clearance, I'll put a steel backer in there and, and uh, that will uh, uh, fall out if I need the clearance. Here I used an aluminum one. So now here we go. We have our hole. I'm going to apply heat. And this, is, this is real time. This is real time. So you can actually see how long it takes. Now this torch is turned way down. I'm going to turn it up and make some noise to kind of speed up the process. It may take a long time or it may never get it hot enough with this low of a flame. So here we go, a little noise. Temperature now you can probably hear me better. We should be able to maintain that. Yeah, no, no, it dissipates heat, so a little more heat. Now I'm gonna go around the inside of this and then over the top of it. Is the repair. We're going to let that cool and go solid. I'll show you the inside. Okay, it has gone solid now, as you can see. This hasn't been compromised at all, my other repair. Let's look at the inside. Can you see that okay? did not compromise the inside as far as getting uh, anything that fell through. I'm going to set that down because it's getting a little warm. All i got to do is grind it off to a nice finish. He saved hundreds of dollars on that. Now I often hear, well, it's you need for strength you've got to have penetration and that is 100% true when you're welding. We are not welding here, we're brazing. And this is a new technology that they don't teach in welding school because this really isn't something you'll use out uh, in your job, but it's good for doing repairs at home, fixing your boats, your props. You know, for people that cannot or do not weld, it, it, you can't beat it. So, let's go to this soda can and see how strong it is. Now, a good TIG welder could fix this, but it probably wouldn't be this strong. What would you say? Barely scratched it. 31,000 pound shear strength. Now let's look at the inside of it. Just like on that side cover, no internal contamination. Okay, let's talk about penetration. If I've got no penetration here, wouldn't you agree that this would poke right through? So let's just go ahead and see what integrity we have here. We have it. It didn't pop out of there. And if it didn't penetrate 
into the aluminum, it wouldn't bend around where the can bent. It wouldn't have stayed in there when I hit it with a hammer trying to pop it back out, would it? Now, there's nothing fake about this product. It works. I've been using this for 10 years. You can buy it off of my website, aluminum-weld.com. That's my phone number. If you have any problems, I'm more than happy to help you over the phone. I have videos on YouTube, and that's how you find me on YouTube. Full set of instructions on this sheet, specifications, order form, and let's say I'm only a phone call away. HTS735 from aluminum-weld.com. Uh, I did the case that you're asking for. I like to do requests. People have some certain things they'd like to see done. If I'm able to do it, I'm more than happy to do that for you. Uh, that will be just as strong or stronger than that can. Obviously, it'll be stronger because it's thicker aluminum. Cast aluminum, cast magnesium, metal, pop metal.